Hey, what's going on guys, Leo. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Uh, looks like, so basically the price has bounced off of this resistance. Now, I was actually wondering if we were going to come down more because of the, the government shutdown. If you look at history, it can go both ways. It, usually government shutdown kind of leads to a lot of uncertainty in the market. But what we've done here, you'll notice that we're, we're still in this uptrending channel, right? This is just price structure. And price bounced off of this support. It was resistance. You'll notice it touched one, two, three, uh, four uh, times. And once it broke through, it came back and tested it. So we have this confluent zone of horizontal support. We have the trend line uh, support. And so I do expect that now what's going to end up happening here, especially with the rate cuts as global liquidity continues to rise uh, into year's end, we're just going to start grinding higher within this channel. So now assuming that because uh, price can only do two things. It can either trend up or down, or it can go range bound, meaning that it moves moves sideways. Now, we're still within this trend because we're making a series of higher highs, higher lows. And so there's a lot of predictions out there about where could price be by the end of the year. And just assuming that we stay within the boundaries of this trend line, uh, excuse me, trend channel as we've been doing, then you can just come up here and take a look that end of the year, you know, Assuming that it lands exactly at the end of the year on, uh, you know, January 1st, you could see what we'll call 11,000 could see if it's at the peak of this channel by the time it could be lower, you know, it could be around 8,500 just depends. But overall, uh, we are trending higher. So in addition to that, with the rate cuts and whatnot and the chart looking really good, we do have some really interesting fundamentals coming into play. So if we take a look here at the debt final deadlines for all of the ETFs. You can see that we have Grayscale's final ETF deadline being the 29th. These are the SEC deadlines for their decision. Uh, we've got October 23rd for 21 shares. BlackRock's October 30th. Uh, Fidelity's uh, November 13th. So I expect that sometime within the next few weeks, I would say, you know, end of October, before these deadlines get here, I guess the earliest that we could expect it would be if are on October 23rd, the staking ETFs get approved. They just, they're going to approve all of them, I would imagine, just like they've done before. Um, and so this could be a catalyst to really encourage people to invest in uh, Ethereum. So now I want to go into, this is a really interesting news piece where they're talking about AI and crypto, but whenever they say crypto, all I can hear is Ethereum. AI made intelligence scalable and programmable. Crypto is doing the same thing for money and value. And when you put them together, uh, it makes programmable money that can meet programmable intelligence. So yeah, this is all MIT uh, lab type stuff. And this is, this is like looking into the future. Yeah. What does it mean, Prash? Sure. Um, so I love that phrase, uh, artificial intelligence as infinitely scalable intelligence. And if you think of blockchain, which is the underlying technology for crypto, as infinitely scalable source of truth, then those two things work very well together. The simple way of thinking about it is if we are moving to a world where AI agents will not just analyze things for you, will not just give you information to make your own decision, but will potentially be allowed to act on your behalf, then we want those agentic systems or those AI systems to act on true sources of information. It would be disastrous if they didn't. So simple examples could be AI agents, not just analyzing your portfolio, but optimizing it. Tax loss harvesting, kind mm -hmm. of simple rote things. We could live in a world, let's get away from finance for a second. We could live in a world where AI agents are able to conduct, and this is some of the work happening at MIT that we talk, talked about earlier. We could be living in a world very shortly where AI agents are conducting screenings for cancer treatments. And the process of doing that involves maybe the purchase of data sets. And a scientist could do that five times a day. An AI agent could do it 5,000 or 5 million or 5 billion times a day in theory. For that AI agent to purchase that data set, to do that experiment at that scale, to ask it to rely on 100-year-old financial rails, it's sort of like trying to stream K-pop demon hunters on a 1994 dial-up modem. It just simply doesn't work. So if we're going to move to this world and have this wonderful advantage of these agents acting at infinitely fast speeds, they have to act on infinitely fast and scalable money rails. And that's what blockchain and crypto is. 
You know what I find most interesting about this is that he's they're talking about mostly Ethereum, but they refuse to say it. And it, you know, why that's the case, you know, maybe they don't want to see uh, be showing favorites, which is kind of silly. But uh, so if we come over here, you can see that the stablecoin supply on Ethereum is now pushing 183 billion. So the majority of stablecoins and tokenized assets are accelerating uh, on Ethereum. And so if AI is going to operate in this world where it can use these stable coins for payments to purchasing me medical records for running experiments, those types of things, or really anything that you could possibly uh, think of, there, there really is no limitation here. You know, AI has to operate in a system. Essentially, it has to operate in an economy. You know, this is what I say about stable coins. Who are the real users of these blockchains? Well, it's real financial assets that are tokenized. They are the citizens of the blockchain. And so you can't really have a world where you have, okay, well, you know, AI is going to exist on this blockchain over here that doesn't have any stable coins and doesn't have any tokenized RWAs. So what's it going to interact with? So it's very obvious that it's going to be on Ethereum. And if you come over here, you can go to ethdigitaloil.com. You can take a look at the, uh, at the report here. This is going to be on page 35, Ethereum and AI, the engine of the autonomous economy. And if you actually go out and you ask any AI, and you say, hey, you know, in a future, let's say that you had to pick one blockchain that you wanted to exist on, that you had to operate, that you had to transact with uh, currencies and build out your own little ecosystem. Which blockchain would you want to exist in? And they all say Ethereum. Now we're going to take a, uh, take a look at a post from uh, GP Hummer. This is uh, Grant Hummer, one of the co-founders of Etherealize. If you want to follow him, go over. Uh, it's at GP Hummer on X. So he says, video evidence for crime or for proving anything else will soon be inadmissible unless there's external verification that the video is legitimate. So I'm, I'm sure that all of y'all are starting to see Sora blowing up or seeing uh, Sam Altman's face all over Twitter with the little memes with, <laughs> with his head in the toilet and whatnot. And Sora AI and just AI in general is getting so good that you can't distinguish it from reality. And what Grant's highlighting here is that, you know, there's going to be a, a time when let's say that you're accused of something and there's video of you doing this really bad thing. And how are you going to prove that it's not, not fake? And so what he's saying is that essentially everything in the future is going to have to be tokenized. You're going to have these receipts showing that, yeah, this one is for me. This one's real. Uh, this isn't something that's generated by AI. And so, you know, this is just another use case of Ethereum that I don't think is priced in yet. So he goes on to say that, uh, well, let's say that uh, with a hash of the contents and a signature conforming to the camera's private key uh, posted to a blockchain that's globally distributed with tens of thousands of validators over 100 billion of staked security, along with the ability to handle arbitrary logic. I wonder what could fit the bill. The ticker is ETH. So, Again, massive opportunity here for ETH to uh, absorb the entire AI market, essentially. These, these agentic AIs that are going to be performing all sorts of tasks from uh, just basic social media content generation and all the way to you know managing corporate finance or even government finance to uh, essentially eliminate corruption. So really interesting stuff. So Sam Altcoin uh, reports that first Abu Dhabi Bank, UAE's largest bank, with over 330 billion in assets, is launching a stablecoin on Ethereum. So, you know, going back to the stablecoin thing, we're just seeing these that go absolutely vertical. Uh, so, if you come right here, where it, just before it starts going vertical, that's when the Genius Act was passed. And then once we saw that market clarity uh, for how to issue these stablecoins, how they're going to be regulated, companies just started mass issuing stablecoins. You know, there's there's no nothing to hold them back now. There's no fear. And so it's just going vertical. And we're going to see the same thing once the Clarity Act is passed and we get clarity within Congress for, you know, how what's the market structure going to be like for issuing RWAs? What are the guidelines? You know, what are the rules of the road, essentially? And so these large financial institutions, once clarity is passed, they're just going to put the, the, the pedal to the metal, uh, so to speak, and they're just going to go full steam ahead and just start issuing RWAs like crazy, building their own DeFi platforms like crazy. And uh, the reason for that is because they face a lot of uh, regulatory risk uncertainty uh, without clarity. And now that that clarity is in the picture, well, it's, it's, you know, there's just essentially nothing holding them back. 
So that pretty much wraps up today's uh, video. You have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you all in the next one.